Hello everyone and welcome to the new episode about editing with Darktable. In this episode we will play a little bit more with color harmonies and this time we will try to see how can we uh, change the mood of the photo by applying different color tonalities to the same photo. Okay, so let's get started. As always we will start with uh, corrections, denoising, maybe lens correction. Okay, this time well, we don't have lens correction for this one, but it's not important. So let's go straight to the exposure correction. Maybe that much. And color balance HEB just to add a bit more contrast. And also enhance the saturation so that we can see the colors of the photo and of course we also need to um, apply a white balance and we're practically ready for color grading but for where do it i would like to duplicate that photo twice <coughs> And now we can start with color grading. Okay, let's go now to the vector scope to see what kind of color harmony can be interesting for this scene. And as you can see, we have something we could use uh, analogs complementary, for example. But I will use one, something else because, let me disable it for a moment, we have that uh, three different areas. One is that uh, yellow orangey here, then we have some purplish there, and blue here. Maybe we can try this time another uh, color harmony, maybe something like that. <coughs> Triad. So what we need to do is to go somewhere here and to say, see how can we improve that. I think the first thing what we can do is to use color balance GB, our first instance of color balance GB. And I would like to shift a blue a little bit or the whole scene in that direction. So we can use, oh, it's too much. Just a tiny bit about there, <clears throat> so that we have a nice bluish shadows. And now what we can do, we can use next instance of the color balance RGB. We don't need to touch color calibration this time. <clears throat> and just give the highlights the highest highlights a bit more yellow so that we can shift this one this direction so let's first um, adjust the mask we don't want to influence everything just the highest highlights so let's do that real quick you know we can go that far yeah maybe something like that Let's add a bit feathering. And now we can use highlight gain in the four way stop. <clears throat> Something like that. And add some yellow. Maybe go even further here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that could be enough. And now we have those two. And the next thing we, we can do is I would like to uh, give those areas with purple a bit more saturation. <clears throat> we don't need to change them. So we need to use a next instance of color balance RGB and try to select that area. 
but let's see what do we got yeah something like that maybe add a bit of feathering and hands to the chest tiny bit and also there okay <clears throat> And only thing what we need to do is just to add the saturation there. Let's say something like that. Yeah. Okay, let's see what uh, should be the next step. So I think the only thing what we need to do is to desaturate a little bit of photo because I would like to have that pastel look. So let's add one color balance GP instance. Go just a bit down with saturation. Maybe we can also add a bit more brilliance here. And of course we need to be careful not to clip. So we can also use filmic and add a bit compression. <clears throat> and now I think we're done. So let's compare that before and after. This was start with after color calibration snapshot. And of course the last step. And we have we have much more pleasant look. Now we have a bit more yellowish the highlights. Then we have some kind of purplish not only on the house here, but also in the trees. And of course blue in the shadows so it lo looks much better okay let's see um, the next step or the next version of this photo this version we would like to add a bit colder look to get that winter uh, mood cold winter mood and for that, I think it will be enough if we use the next instance of color calibration and play a little bit with channel mixer. So what we can do, we can go with a, a input green and just remove a little bit red from green. Let's see how far we should go. That's about there. And maybe we can also add a little bit from the red, from the that yellow, in the highlights to the blue so we can use input red and just a tiny bit blue there and now we have something like that analog colors you so see we we are starting practically uh, with this kind of blue which is quite in the, in the uh, in the direction of purple and ending here in the greens so also i would like to desaturate a little bit the photo and i don't know maybe also add a bit more brightness and of course try to not to overexpose it so now we have a quite cold version that could be some um, somewhere in the early morning in the early morning in the winter so let's see before and after take snapshot and the last step now it's much colder a winter day okay let's try the next one for this one, I would like to have some kind of warm version of the photo, so we need to get rid of all uh, cold colors. We can use for that color calibration, also channel mixer. So we'll add a bit more green to the red. Maybe something like that. Then what we also need to do is <coughs> go to the blue channel and give a bit more um, or remove a little bit of blue 
with input red and maybe also with input blue so we have almost no cold colors in the photo but i don't like that um strange yellow so let's also play a little bit with this one a bit more and maybe i can also add a bit red something like that let me see Um, and now a bit more red yeah and of course I would like to desaturate that maybe all three channels and of course it's quite boring we have now something like uh, this but it's now monochromatic I would like to improve it even better. So to get rid of that uh, boring monochromatic look, we can spread the hue across different brightness areas. For example, I could uh, add a bit more red in the shadows or go to the in direction of purple in the shadows. In the middle, we could have some orange, orange in the mid, mid tones and in the highlights maybe something like yellow and that will enhance a little bit uh, the mood or tonality of our photo so let's do that so first i need to go to the color balance rgb and i think i would like to rotate the whole thing just a tiny bit in this direction so that we have uh, something like <coughs> That we go is in, in direction of uh, of red. <coughs> Excuse me. But not completely red. It, that it's now orange. And now we can add one more in, instance of color balance. Edgy be uh, mask only the shadows. Let me see how far we should go. Uh, maybe a bit more. Let's say that far. Of course, with a feathering. And now we can go to the four ways tab and use our shadows lift and to get a bit more different color i can go with a hue quite wide somewhere here in the purple maybe even more and add some chroma there maybe we can also do that in the mid-tones because we have now masked only the shadows and also go with a hue somewhere here a bit different color just to give you see now the difference and now of course we don't want to go with a saturation that much high so we also can tame that saturation a little bit down and as you can see, we have now here one point in the shadows, which had a different color. And uh, by the way, I would like to also improve. Uh, we are clipping here, I think. Let me real quick add a bit of compression. Yeah. Okay, and now we can use the next instance of color balance RGB. And mask only the highlights. So I don't know maybe something like that oh that's too let's go a bit higher maybe something like that you can improve it later if it's too much but let's say this area we want to influence with the highlights so we can now use also four ways tab and go to the highlights game and maybe also use a little bit of global offset but this time I will try to neutralize only in this area that uh, orangey. So we can go in somewhere in the green with highlights gain. And by the way, we can also try to use 
this one and maybe a bit more rotation and as you can see we are immediately have only just by that move now let me try also to use a bit more here global offset <clears throat> just but it's some oh it's too far that small move we have now uh interesting colors in the whole scene now we have uh reddish shadows and mid-tones are more um orangey and now how we have also yellowish highlights so let's see how can we improve this photo even more now we are practically done but what we need can do uh, I can improve a little bit the contrasts and play with saturation a bit more. So I will add one more instance of color balance RGB. And now I can maybe darken the shadows. Tick higher. No, we don't need to go too far with uh, with brilliance in the highlands. <coughs> Highlight, excuse me. And we can add a bit more saturation in shadows and mid-tones now. And you're practically done with this one. So we have quite warm uh, photo here. Let me compare that with our untouched colors. And now it looks like nice evening winter day. Okay, now as you can see we have three different versions of the same photo. <clears throat> the first one, this one, is quite similar to this painting. That is the painting of the quite famous French painter Claude Monet, Lepi. And as you can see, he has also interesting colors in the shadows. He has a bit more bluish and that goes to the purple, similar to, to our shadows. And he has also around the trees some kind of purplish, magentish touch, as in our example. And also a bit more orangey yellowish in the highlights, as we also have. So it's quite interesting. And now we can compare this one with maybe with this painting. That is the painting from Lukas van Walkenbach, that is a Flemish painter. And he has used more bluish tone for his painting. Uh, we don't have exact the same colors as here, but the tone is goes in that direction. We don't have those the, uh, those details in the foreground. And the last one, this one, or warmest. <clears throat> version is quite similar to this painting. And that is the painting from Joseph Farkunson. I hope I have spelled his name correctly. That is an English or a Scottish painter. And this uh, painting has a quite poetic name. The shortening winter's day is near a close. And he has used quite warm colors to uh, show the nice winter evening scene and we have quite similar tone or quite similar color composition so he has also used a bit more uh, purplish in the shadow but similar like what we have here and uh, as you can see also <clears throat> quite a lot of red and uh, orange around the trees 
and also a little bit more even we can say a bit more bluish or greenish touch in uh, with with a, with a some amount of yellow in the highlights we have now seen how painting can also be a good source of inspiration to broaden our view of possible color compositions especially since painters have been practicing the use of the colors for centuries and have also culturally shaped our perception through their works. As a photographer, you can learn a lot from them. Okay, next example. This will be our second example. And as always, first some corrections. Lens correction, denoising, and also we need to brighten our photo a little bit. Maybe add some contrast, not that much. Oh, that's too much. And saturation, so that we are able to see the colors a bit better. And of course, we need also to white balance our photo, so we will use color calibration. And we have something like that, but it's too cold. We will um, uh, have one version that looks like that, but we will start with neutral one. And I think the background should be gray, so let's try to use the background for white balancing. Yeah, let's look. That looks much better. <clears throat> and now we have a starting position for our photo. So let's make. I don't know, maybe two duplicates. And start with this one. <clears throat> and now we can go in uh, different directions. Let's go to our rectoscope. We already have, as it is, quite nice uh, colors here. We can have an um, analog um, color harmony or even uh, this one that could also fit so let's say that will be the the first one which is qu quite okay we don't need to do anything here but let's uh, use also the analog colors <coughs> and try also to change the background for this case and what we need to do is to um, go to the color calibration next instance and we need to change the color of the background so let's mask first that and i think we can use because the background is gray we can use our saturation slider for masking let me see and go with the saturation down so that we don't have see how far we can go maybe maybe there and some feathering and now we need to exclude the rest from uh, our model just by adding one drone mask here of course we need to turn toggle the polarity Need to need to improve a little bit. So maybe also a bit more here. Okay. Now we have our mask. <clears throat> and now we can change the color of the background so we can give it a bit more warmer color let's say we can add a bit more reddish and maybe go i would like to fit to have that background that fits a bit more the the color of the model so with that more or less monochromatic look let me improve the mask a bit better Yeah, about that. Okay. 
And now, to be able to fit uh, everything in analog uh, color harmony, we need to change some colors. And what we can change is the color of the hair of the woman. We can give the color of the hair a bit more, let's see, purplish look. So let's do that also with the next instance of color calibration. This time we'll mask just the hair. I don't know, we can try to find the colors. Yeah, it's already here. We are already there. But we need to exclude. Um, let me let me try it this way. I would like to add a bit more of the purple also. Okay, it doesn't doesn't look better. Whatever. We need to exclude the areas from the skin and other areas. So let's use drone mask and exclude that from the from the face. Uh, no, let me let me try that again. Uh, let's look better. Okay, also maybe we can go a bit down with the ring. I don't need, don't want to spend too much time on masking. Let's say that's good. Okay, now we have masked our hair off from our model. And now we can go to the blue channel and maybe I'll just add a bit blue. Something like that. And we immediately have the different color of the hair and it fits better in our harmony. And what we also need, we need to spread this part a little bit in this direction. We can use for this one uh, color balance RGB next instance because I would like to influence only the highlights and maybe mid-tones. So let's do that with four ways and let's go there. I think it will be enough. Let me see. Could we also use a bit more? Yeah, something like that. <clears throat> of course, we need to desaturate a bit and everything. Maybe also that, this. And now we have the colors in the range. And I will also add one more instance of color balance RGB just to regulate the saturation a bit, bit better. So I would like to add more saturation in shadows. Maybe mid-tones a little bit. Something like that. Let me improve a bit better the first one. I don't want to go too far. Something like that. Okay, the diffuse and sharpen. Oh, we'll use maybe sharpen preset. And a bit more the situation in the highlights, I will say. Okay, now we have that first version. Let's compare that with color balance with just uh, white balance or is this thing this one <clears throat> snapshot and the difference 
And now we have only analog colors in this example. And now we'll try to get another example with a bit more bluish background. So the bluish background is quite easy. We can use, we can go opposite uh, with color calibration with uh, channel mixer. Then in the last example, so we will add the next instance of color calibration and directly go to the red and remove the red in the blue with the blue and input blue and input green a little bit, maybe add a bit back here. And we can also play a little bit because we have here now that uh, colder part. So we can use now this color um, harmony, analog, complementary. And we need to shift a little bit the blue or green to the blue so we can add a ton of blue here <coughs> and remove it from the red. Something like that, nothing special. And I would like to improve that even better just by adding a bit more yellow or orange only in the highlights with the color balance, next instance of color balance, and we're done. This was quite easy, actually. <coughs> Something like that. Okay, of course, we can improve a bit saturation, just a bit. Maybe not that much in the and of course, uh, sharpening, maybe. So, then we have now analog complementary. We have the back, um, the colder background, uh, which helps about quite a lot to uh, pop up our model in the foreground. So let's see before and after. Here is our starting point. And it's quite a nice improvement. Okay. So what we have here, let me go to the this one and just improve a bit more saturation. Just a tiny bit. And now we have four versions of our photo. In the meantime, I have made another, let's say, deviation from the first one uh, without showing you. That could be a nice homework task. I have used the dyad for the, just to test how it looks like. And it also works quite nicely. I think I need to desaturate a bit more the background but it's not important to just uh, wanted to show you the, possi the other possibility. <clears throat> you can try that alone at home. It's based on the first one that we have used. Okay. Um, and now I would like to an announce some quite good news for a dark table. Since a few days ago, we have a new color adjustment module called Primaries and developed by Sakari Kapanen with intention to simplify the channel mixing functionality. And this uh, module will be in the next uh, stable version, which will be about end of the year. So I would like to uh, present you what this module does and how can be useful, especially for the color grading. We will go, we, we don't want to go too much into detail this time. I think I would like to make one episode extra when the time comes, when you are also able to use it. But let me present you now what this module does and how can be useful for uh, color grading. I have here a schematics so that we can see what the 
RGB primaries module does. We have three primary colors, red, green, and blue. And for those primary colors, we have two sliders here. One is hue slider and the second is the purity slider. With a hue slider, we can change the hue of the particular primary color into direction of one of the secondary colors. For example, if we use red, we can move it in direction of magenta or in the yellow. So let me do it real quick. So for example, we want to move it into, or give it some orangey look. That means move it in the yellow direction, we can go to the right, and we have also changed the colors. But you can see the other channels are interconnected, so they are also it's, uh, have also changed their, their values accordingly. And we can go now in another direction, and now we are close to the magenta. And also the other channels, the same logic for the other channels. For example, if we move the green in this direction and to the right, we are going more into the cyan. And if we're moving the slider in opposite direction, we are going more into the yellow. And for blue, also the same. Now we are moving the blue in direction of the cyan uh, and uh, magenta, excuse me. If you are going moving it to the right or moving into the left, we are going in this direction. But you can see all all uh, channels are interconnected, so you are moving practically every channel. So you are practically um, channel mixing without influencing the middle part, that white point. But and now uh, the purity uh, slider adds a bit in the intensity to the particular channel that you have changed or used. For example, if we are using red primary, we can now add some intensity to that color. <clears throat> okay, but uh, we can also, if you want, and that is quite uh, useful for color grading, we can also change the, the tint. What that means, we can now use the tint hue as additional uh, slider to uh, move um, the white point in particular direction with the two and now the tint purity is at zero so we didn't change anything in the middle in that white point but now we can add some purity and we are changing also that white point you can also recognize that here that white point is move, moves into the direction of that particular color that is chosen by a uh, slider here and now if i move that hue slider you see how the white point rotates around all those colors. So that is practically how that the module works. It's a simplified version of the channel mixing, but let's see how useful can that be for color grading. So let's use uh, our photo from our last example to be able to demonstrate a bit uh, what can be done with uh, RGB primaries. And in this case, let's say we have already quite nice uh, harmony, analogous harmony, and we have a white balance to the photo, so we have that analogous harmony, harmony and the uh, background is gray. What we like to, what I would like to do is to spread this harmony, let me disable that for a moment, both uh, colors, on the end of the range in this direction, so to spread a little bit that analog colors. And what we can do now is we can move, for example, we have a red here, this one. We can move that red towards um, magenta a little bit here. You see how we are rotating now that red in that direction. Maybe you can also add a bit purity. And now everything is reddish, but now we can compensate that by using uh, the blue channel and go in the opposite direction and also add a purity. And I would like to have it more yellowish in the skin. Now I can use green hue and move the green towards yellow a little bit, maybe. 
something like that, and also add some purity. And as you can see, we have now widen our uh, range, and the, the result is also that we have a little bit desaturated the photo, so we can add, we can use color balance HGP and add a bit more saturation in the photo. Something like that. And then we can see before and after. So we have started here, or here, snapshot, and this is now much better, quite quick and easy. Uh, readjustment of the colors. Now we have nice skin colors and also a bit more um, reddish or how to say maybe magentish uh, um, hair and looks already quite nice just with one with few adjustments in the primaries without touching the background. It's quite uh, quick and easy. Okay, let's see the next example. Now we have the same photo as before, starting position. And in this time, I would like to change the background color a little bit, give it that colder touch so that we are able to separate our subject even better. And because we have a gray background, we need to shift a white point this time. So we will go with the tint hue to the particular color that I would like to have in the background, some kind of blue. Let's try that one and add the purity. And we already have now, you can see, we have here the blue background, but everything is pale. So we need to improve the rest. So what we can do, we can now change the, adjust a little bit the uh, red. We're moving to toward uh, magenta, maybe add a bit more purity. And also we can, use the blue channel and also bit the green channel just to give the skin a nice tone so something like that maybe let me see how far should we go with purity sliders and we're practically done we have now as you can see we have now something like complementary colors you can, of course, add a bit more saturation so that you can recognize that a bit better. Just with one instance of uh, LGP primary modules, we have already a nice um, color grading improvement. So it's very, very good uh, module. I'm quite, quite surprised how quick you can make the changes. So let's try one more example. Okay, let's use this one as last example. And of course, we need to make some correction. I don't think this one has, you know, hasn't done have lens correction. Whatever. We can add a bit brightness and contrasts. And of course, also saturation so that we can see the colors. And we need to improve the white balance of the photo. Of course, so we can use color calibration for that. Oh, we have some bluish. Let's find some other area for white balancing. I don't know, maybe a flower. Yeah, it looks better. And now we can see what can we do with uh, just with edge of the primaries. Okay, let's go now to Vectroscope to see what we have. And we have the mess here. So we need to decide what to do with this one. And what is practically quite interesting with RGB primaries module, if you're not sure what to do, what you can do now, you can uh, use the tint hue to <laughs> help you to decide what kind of harmony you want to have. So let's do that. So I will add now purity, go purity up and to see what kind of changes we have. And now we can move uh, tint hue in particular direction. Let's see. Okay, here we are going to the analog. I don't know, this one is not interesting. And another analog. 
but here I think here it's quite interesting because we can have here uh, let's say there triad okay let's do the triad so we need to improve it let's first find that one rotate it let's say there and what we need to improve we need to move the uh, red into the direction of magenta so bang I don't know add some we practically actually done but let's let's play a little bit more what can we also do maybe we can move that greenish bit more into the yellow and I don't know blue also yeah add some more or less we are done I don't want to play with uh, other colors because you can recognize it's already quite good so don't need to uh, mask and play around too much and you see only a few movements what we also can do we can play a little bit with uh hue shift and i don't know maybe a bit less something like that and of course we need to adjust our triad to that and <laughs> Quick and easy, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see before and after. Now, let's start here. Yeah, we have improved quite a lot because we don't have that strange yellowish uh, cast. Now we have clean colors, clean separation between the colors. Of course, we could uh, now also the, uh, mask the, the background yellow to tame it down, give it another color, but it's not important in this case. What is quite important is how easy and quick you can have some uh, nice result just by one one um, instance of the primaries, RGB primaries module. <clears throat> what you also can do, and we don't want to do that here, you can move the primaries above filmic RGB and, and uh, then you can now uh, have more room with uh, adjusting of that white point but we don't want to spend too much time on this module now because you don't have this module so you can cannot use it so I don't want to be too cocky with this uh, options but you will have it in the next version and that will be quite nice improvement and I would like to play a little bit more with this module in the next days okay so let's let me finish the ex ep this episode here if you have any questions be free to ask in comment sections or or in pixel.us uh, discussion forum and I think we will make one more episode I'm not sure but one more episode about color grading and then should be should conclude this topic but uh, let's see. Okay, so thank you for watching and bye bye.